I actually thought um, before we get to, like before we start talking about the book itself, I actually came across a tweet that was extremely underground of, of oh. this person to tweet. <laughs> I, we might cut this out. We might not. I don't know if either of you guys have heard of Joffrey Miller. He's like this. He's like this. Um, I think he's in uh, like e- Evo Psych kind of an area or something. But he's like. I don't know. He, I think he, he he kind of fancies himself as like intellectual dark web or at least like IDW adjacent. Also, just uh, I, I'll make a very quick point here. Dude, honestly, I'm very questionable of like public figures that are like Evo psych at this point. There are, a lot, of, there, there are a lot of them running around who are just like, like that are just like, the, it, it's just like a way of viewing the world and it's not to say that like evolutionary psychology doesn't have like a strong scientific basis of course but the public figures who are just like espousing all these ideas and are like looking at the world through that lens just come across as stupid but continue what did he say he goes he tweets are there any good youtube channels that explain women's makeup and hair for young men with an like an emphasis on for young men comma so men can judge how much effort a woman made before a date or whether a girlfriend's look is smart and classy someone responds what's wrong with just looking at them and then he responds to that comment most guys seem to have no idea whether a woman has spent two hours on her look before a date or five minutes they don't they often don't even know the difference between foundation and blush or eyeliner and mascara what is it honestly guys like this i I just i (laughs) I just wish they were dragged to the gulags, dude. Honestly, like, 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 honestly, what a cretins! Just like, like to inform like a bunch of just like young men, just to like you know analyze women. Like, only one point four hours. Oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> is that not an extreme? I'm worth at least one point seven. What what an absolute cretin to like. I mean, how much time do you guys put into dates? I I I. I well, that's. Uh, 25 30 minutes like you get like yeah. you know you get like, ready you, you get ready to go like, out yeah you, you know you might like style your hair make sure you look good yes, smell yes. Good, but, <laughs> but you expect like a woman to just like you know i, I can't imagine sinking like, t- two hours of my day into just like finally grooming myself and just like every myself, hair in alignment every hair a statue <laughs> just, <laughs> just, like i it, it, that that I read that and I was just you know th- this is the modern day Dostoevsky <laughs> like the like I just found that tweet to be extremely undergroundish. I I I I just thought I like saw that I just saw that at, like the original tweet from Miller and I was just like okay this this personifies many of the extremely toxic traits in the underground man right there. It's just like okay because like think about it okay you're, you're like you're on a date with that woman and then he's advocating for the youtube tutorialization of discerning like how much like i, I, I like per, like what personality aside like humor oh, aside like, like absurd interest levels aside. of objectification just like how much of your labor has gone into like my pleasure <laughs> Which just made me it like it made me just instantly think of that quote. Uh, it's like it won't spoil that much. Like towards the end, where you know the underground man is just in that embrace, and he just goes like, "I can't. They won't let me be happy." <laughs> just, like, <laughs> it just like that quote just like made me think of that. And, and like, and, like I, I could just imagine a character like that sitting at the like, dinner table and just being like, you know, like, did she? Sp- bite me finally like you know like spending an hour with the makeup yes, like, yes. like did she intend for me to notice this like yes. i guess fury rose up within me it's like it- Creep, you yeah. monster creep. So, so you know, it, it, I, I was filled with rage upon realizing that she had only deigned to spend an hour on me, and then incensed by the fact that she looked so good after only an hour. <laughs> like, yeah, just, yeah. You know? <laughs> I hate her for being attracted to her. <laughs> <laughs> It's very That's underground. underground. Yeah. Spe- wait, speaking of what, what, um, what like editions did all of us read for part two? Because Adam, did you, you actually read the same version that I have? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Cause we, cause you and I have, um, it's the, tr- it's the, tr- excuse me, translation by Ralph Matlaw by Dutton paperback. And I, like, I thought this was, I couldn't imagine a better translation. It was so good. It was so good. Yeah. Cause what, yeah. what did you have Giffen? 
Well, that's a good question, Jordan. Um, <laughs> you see, because the original um, version that I read, I think might have been Constance Garnet. Uh, actually, Adam, okay. you have the physical copy, so you might be able to comment on that. Um, but then when I was re-going through it, I listened to an audio book freely available um, mm. online, just on YouTube. Okay. And I don't remember what version was used there. But then I also, like, to kind of supplement that, I... <laughs> I copied and downloaded from like Project Gutenberg, a free, mm. uh, you know, version of that. So it, it's kind of a mess. <laughs> I also listened to um, uh, just while I was like, you know, messing around um, at, uh, an audiobook version of this too. And I'm trying to, cause it, that was excellent as well. Um, that was okay. And you know, whatever. Like Audible is set up so poorly that it, it's very hard to actually pull up the information about the. Uh... Oh, narrated by Daniel Dorse. It was extremely good. So I just wanted to like give him a shout yeah, out. Sure. Um, okay, so like as we're as we're getting into it, I mean, generally, I I I have loved the second part, um, and I I was often, I was like I actually found myself laughing at it like you know like i very much enjoyed the read it's very I funny it yeah. very very funny <laughs> it's an extremely yeah. it's funny yeah my, i think my favorite moment that i i wish there were there's so many funny moments but i i really enjoyed like whenever they uh he was trying to get to like the prostitution house after he had gone to the hotel <laughs> to eat with the guys yeah, right yeah, 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 and yeah. he was just like <laughs> jabbing the cabmans like in the back he's just like he's like he's like, he's like, he's like <laughs> He's like faster, but I, I wouldn't get the exact words. But it was, of course, it was. I was so yeah, funny. Yeah. <laughs> the, I mean, I, I, dude, I was cackling when he talked about the villainy of the officer as well. <laughs> well I mean, we'll get to all of this, but like, so okay, so just to recap from last time. So basically, he's so he wrote part one when he was forty, uh, if I remember correctly, and <clears throat> he then sort of turned to part two explaining the narrative and i take it that and i take it that part two is really sort of what began his descent i mean he was obviously like underground at the beginning of part two but i take it that that was sort of the <clears throat> or maybe like one of the events in his life that <laughs> multiple <laughs> events well, yeah. Covered, yeah. Well, but but I was thinking that like like kind of set of events that like secured him like an inescapable position with the underground. Yeah, I think it it led to kind of the these events led to his analysis, which he kind of goes over in part one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's like even hard to know that. I mean, it's clear like this guy had some form of psychosis since like yeah. school, oh, yeah. right? I mean, like he was under the impression that they all hated him and he yeah. all he hated them all as well like even like back in and his like, one friend schooling. he just abused yeah <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah yeah um oh yeah no that's definitely true and i guess honestly we're kind of like the target audience for part two because he said he was 24 when writing this and sort of a young man in he he, re he refers to himself as a clerk in some sort of it wasn't clear if he was in the military or not. Civil it, service, I believe. Yes, yeah, like the post office or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, I think Russian society basically has you go into the military or you go into the civil service if you're like a you know okay. middle class kind of guy. So okay. that would be the non-military branch. All sure. kind of bureaucracy stuff, you know. Yeah, very. But it doesn't matter even. It's just like, you know, no. you're, <laughs> you sit at a desk and push papers or push pencils or whatever. No, which, which is, I mean, that essentially <clears throat> is in some ways uh what we are doing right now at the age of 25 so like I, I felt like i was kind of the target audience for this you know what i mean yeah, yeah no i think that's very fair um and it spoke to me more or less to various degrees in various parts so maybe we just will you know we'll kind of like walk through because it's more of a narrative than the first time so we should be careful about <clears throat> trying to be a little bit more linear but um there are independent themes again within it um I, I i i found myself laughing a lot actually at when he was talking about work um and like the, like the, the kind of the daily minutia of what was going on at his office where where he said you know i mean like this is obviously this is obviously exacerbated to a degree that i can't relate to in, in full but i i think if everyone's being honest, like we could definitely relate to some part of this where he was just like, he's talking about his, his, his life in the office. And he says, 
I made friends with no one and even avoided talking and hid myself in my corner more and more. At work in the office, I even tried never to look upon anyone. And I was very well aware that my colleagues looked upon me not only as a crank, but looked upon me. So I always thought, seemed to look upon me with a sort of loathing. <laughs> I sometimes wondered why no one except me thought that he was looked upon with loathing, which is funny because that, so the last sentence there is where he really, I mean, that's the first of many shades where he will, uh, he, he is like a, a case study in, overusing the fundamental attribution error where he will always look at people in terms of like their state of mind. He, he's like stuck in the objective attitude towards people in a way that is like very, very um, deleterious to his interpersonal and intrapersonal health. Um, yeah. And like, even that like is like a complete contradiction. It's like, I wonder like I was like, you know, the only one who was looked upon poorly. And then he just like literally follows it up. With, like, <laughs> what, what? I laugh at this, like one of our clerks had a repulsive pockmarked face, which even looked villainous. <laughs> I believe I would not have dared to look at anyone with such an unsightly face. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> it's like, it, he's so brutal. Like, he's so brutal. <laughs> I think we should say also that he's just a bad guy too. Oh yeah, like he's just a bad. He's he's like I mean you have to feel sorry for him. like he's obviously like like deluded and just oh yeah completely out of his mind. But he's also just a very bad character. He's a jerk. So, <laughs> yeah, he's terrible. Oh, he's a terrible yeah. guy. Yeah, and he he's always just like I mean he sets <clears throat> he sets he's not doing himself any favors in the way he thinks about things. So on like the next page he says. Of course, I hated all my fellow clerks, one and all, and I despised them all. Yet at the same time, I was, as it were, afraid of them. So he's, and I, I honestly do think that this is like a, um, this is a combination of traits that is more common in young men than it is of anyone else, where it's like, he, I mean, he's taking it to the, like, he's just cranking the dials up in both cases, but he, there is this like aspect of him thinking that he's better than everyone, but at the same time, being very afraid of being judged by people to the point where he's just like unable to form a real connection with anyone in a very, like a very kind of a tragic way. And he says, uh, there's just another quote that made me laugh. Still another circumstance tormented me in those days that no one resembled me and that I resembled no one else. I am alone and they are everyone, I thought and pondered. So he's just like, he, he, I don't know. It's like very weird. He's, he's like failing to understand that. I don't know. Like he, he also succumbs to the spotlight effect a lot too, where he's like, every, he, he just thinks everyone is thinking about him and noticing him all the time. Like he, yeah. the entire first encounter is basically that like the first scenario. Yes. Um, yes. Like with the, uh, the, the officer. Yes. <laughs> it's just the pages and pages of him pouring over like the, the nuanced social, like status um, relations between him and this like one guy who literally did not probably like realize he exists. I, 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 that it's is like the that, whole, the whole scenario, but it's pages and pages poured into it. The interactions with the officer might have been my favorite part of the entire second part because they're they, hilarious. They're I think so the, funny. Some of the ending got me, but that, that's, um, pretty close. So, um, I just wanted to just really briefly just mention, oh, um, yeah, because you were talking about like you both were talking about how like he kind of like oscillates between like these, um, kind of hyperbolic stances. He's like, like I am so far above everyone. Just like, I can't believe no one else has like the um, observational skills to see how, what a lowly man like this was or pitiable or whatever. Then he'll immediately go like, sometimes I, I, for a moment thought everyone was more, you know, was um, better than I was. And he's like, I, I abandoned those thoughts. It was like, basically I just want to bring to uh, light um, the very end, like literally the very last line mm. where it says like the notes of this paradoxicalist do not end here. Um, just the, is it is very very important to the story seemingly that he's kind of like filled with contradictions that just won't resolve yeah and, and he experiences them and he acts upon like different aspects and it's just there's just no end to it and it's very difficult to talk about an example that i've had of this in like my own life because <laughs> the details are often too personal to like talk about but obviously i've never experienced it to this extent but it <laughs> it's I, I don't know i'm just curious if you guys will like get what i'm trying to refer to or not but there will be times where like 
you're kind of presented with like certain ways of being or like certain like courses of action where, and you're very unsure of like what to do in any of them uh, to the point where you can begin to have an inner monologue about that particular topic that sounds, you know, 15% of this or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 No, yeah, no I agree with that. Yeah. And that. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's extraordinary hyperbole, but I think we're all supposed to kind of feel like moments of this. I I think, honestly, there's not a human being on Earth who hasn't experienced some form of something like that, you know, where it's just like... Especially what is the age range where he's describing, you know, Mm. huge uncertainties. Yeah, where it's just like you begin to become a paradoxicalist yourself. Yeah. Like, it's just like there's no right course of action, yet you have to choose, but there's like this inaction that's always available. But, you know, it's just, yeah, yeah. Um, uh. So, so, okay. Like introducing the villainy of the officer, he's like, so he's, um, he's trying to go into a tavern to start a fight because he sees, he's like walking along on some night and he sees these like kind of, you know, good old boys in the tavern and they're, they're fighting, they're like, they're fighting with pool sticks and, and they, um, they throw like some, someone out the window of the, of the tavern. And he's just like, that strikes him as something that is to, like, positively to be desired for him to be like, thro- you know, thrown out of a, a window. Um, <clears throat> and so he goes, so he goes into the tavern to try to, uh, to try to get into a fight. And, and cause he knows how he's not like going into a fight to try to win. He's like going into the fight to try to lose. He wants um, to be thrown out the window. He wants yeah. to. Like, he's, yeah. he's like, he's really hoping that happens. So yeah. And he was, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Well, yeah i was gonna say this is like one of my favorite lines it's, I, um I, I don't know exactly where we we're at but it's basically like it seemed that i was not even equal to being thrown out of the window and i went away without <laughs> having my fight it's just, yes this state of mind is just ridiculous well so so because he says um you know so he was kind of thwarted in the attempt to get into a fight by this officer and i'll just read because like the, the writing is just so funny how he how he, like this guy you know um views things he says i was standing by the billiard table and my ignorance and in my ignorance blocking up the way and he wanted to pass he took me by the shoulders and without a word without a warning or an explanation moved me from where i was standing to another spot and passed by as though he had not noticed me i could even have forgiven blows but i absolutely could not have could not forgive his having moved me and so completely failed to notice me so it's like this officer which is like it's actually true it's extremely disrespectful respectful to just move someone (laughs) honestly i'm kind of wondering whenever i read this um it kind of seemed to be more like he was just in the way and like Mm -hmm. so the guy like needed you know this guy seemed like more of a bouncer or something you know like he kind of moved moved him out of the way so he could you know proceed no 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 given that that guy is the officer that he right right right, i get that but like i I, his seemed to be like more of like a you know i don't want to say peacekeeping but, but like peacekeeping right no, I don't think so because, like, it, there was no. He just said he was standing by the billiard table. Like this guy, like this guy, just wanted to move past him and just simply, like, just moved, like, the, like the underground man. Yeah, I don't know. I I kind of interpreted this as more of like a very slight encounter, like, you know, yeah. slightly brush aside. Well, the, that's the funny thing is too about this is because like. Uh, like obviously this guy is kind of an unreliable narrator so this could have been as simple as someone simply you know like you're kind of at like a packed like bar or whatever and you just kind of brush past someone and he, you know but he in his you know just insanity could have easily interpreted that simple move as uh you know him like moving uh yeah he's he, you he know tre- like treated like unreli- a fly yes <laughs> he always seemed like an unreliable narrator so yeah i i love i love so so nothing happens essentially um and he says i went out of the tavern straight home confused and troubled and the next night i continued with my petty vices still more fervently abjectly and miserably than before as it were with tears in my eyes but i but still i did continue them don't imagine though that i funked out on the officer through cowardice i have never been a coward at heart though i've always been a coward in action don't be in a hurry to laugh there's an explanation for it i have an an explanation for everything you may be sure so he's like you know it there is a way in which you can't really be a coward at heart if you aren't uh uh like a coward in action 
You know what I mean? Like, it, you, you know how like bravery is not like br- bravery is something that you can't really do from like a state of mind because if you act valiantly, but you're not afraid, it wasn't really bravery. It was just sort of like, you know, brashness or, or, you know, but like the entire, like what defines being like brave is overcoming certain feelings. And he's just like, well, I was, I was always a coward at action, but, but never at heart, you know, like, <laughs> which makes absolutely no sense. Hmm. So, so it's like, it's like, he, I mean, it's clear that he's a big time coward in the later scenes whenever he's like you know trying to like oh yeah the he coward right? through and through <laughs> yes yes I, I love when he dives out of the way <laughs> 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 it's like yeah there, there's no greater moment of cowardice like it's, yeah because so, so you're referring to because he, he he's like he's obsessed with this officer to the point where like he he, he thought about him for years he, he like dwelled. Years. <clears throat> yeah, he said like two years. So he was like stewing on this. Like he, he says like the villainy of the officer <laughs> for two years. He says he says he would go down and like walk along. He kind of painted this picture of like a marketplace along the river or something. Yes. Yeah. Where, where the officer would often, you know, stroll with his comrades and he would go and just watch and learn about him. And, he, you know, he said like it was extremely difficult to get information about this guy because he didn't know his name. But, you know, one day he heard someone call out his surname to him, you know, from afar. And he, you know, he used that to sort of inquire about him in the service. And he followed him home and paid his doorman, like, information, you know, to, to like, you know, learn what he could about him, what room he was in, whether he lived alone or not. And, and also, it, like, he, mad. he remarks on the fact, that, like, through his observations... <laughs> He notices that, you know, people who view themselves as like lower in status to the officer always sort of move aside as the officer, you know. Um, as he's walking. When, yeah. yeah, like when they're both, you know, if they were to collide, someone of lower status steps aside. And the officer himself will step aside for those who are of, you know, higher, higher status. It, higher yeah. status. Exactly. Yeah, this is like the, the psychosis. It's like surrounds this idea of like, I will assert my equality before this man. He will like be forced to recognize me. <laughs> yes, like, that yes. that is like two years worth of effort goes into like planning a singular encounter where he can establish his equality. I mean, honestly, I, the, the phrase doesn't make any sense, but I think he would probably say, "Establish my equality over him." <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, yeah. that's kind of the attitude it gives off. That's an extremely no underground <laughs> phrase, actually. Yeah, <laughs> and it, 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 you know, completely ridiculous. Um. But like he's he's kind of he gives off the impression that he's like he's like middle class, but like kind of not like lower the best financial. Class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like he has like a yeah. an okay, not great paying job, but like you know he's not a peasant. But like he's about to like just. <laughs> well, I guess we can go along with the story, but like it, no, the like, encounter like, that forms in his mind requires him just sinking everything <laughs> he owns. <laughs> no, Giffen, it's like it's like okay, this is like the type of guy who I ca- kind of was like ki- kind of our. Um, economic status growing up where it was like it was a real burden not not burden but it was a real it was it was a non-trivial monetary decision if you wanted to have like the new jordans or whatever you know pe- people would you know it was a, it was a serious consideration yeah, yeah pe- people would show up with like 150 dollars shoes you'd be like oh that's that's sick and meanwhile you'd be wearing like you know kind of like 30 dollar like you know old adidas or something that were yeah. like on sale you know what I mean? it's like yeah. okay there's nothing to complain about about old Adidas or whatever, but, but you know, like you can get like if you were this type of person, you know, you just like the villainy of the like the, <laughs> the, the stat is like you will establish your equality over them because <laughs> he goes through insane lengths to like prepare for this moment because he's planning to just like he thinks he will establish equality over him by just walking into him and like not moving, and he thinks that you know. He says, like, you know, th- this will surely cause him to, like, crumple before me. Like, he'll, yeah. he'll, <laughs> like he'll realize the error of his ways. And he, because he, he has, like, some raccoon pelt or whatever, but he's got to upgrade to, like, a beaver pelt that he knows will go bad. Well, in, no, like, a you few know, he, he, he doesn't even have the beaver. He has to upgrade to the raccoon. 
I, I, I think that's the one because because he, he can't get Beaver. Beaver's too. It's, it's something needs, like that. It's yeah. raccoon imitation. And he or, was I mean, obs- Beaver imitation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. And he was obsessed with the the gloves because the lemon colored ones that he had you know, would have been too gaudy and too like attention drawing to himself to just run into like, the officer wearing. Oh, actually, no. I recall now. It's he he doesn't he doesn't get beaver but he gets beaver imitation because he is raccoon which he knows it's so funny too because he says like he knows that the beaver imitation will be kind of ruinous within the year like it doesn't yeah. last very long but he he like he borrows money from his superior officer or, like you know yeah. isn't he boss. known for never <laughs> lending money to yeah, yes yes <laughs> yes Wait, and later remember he also owes that one um the guy from from you know like his university mate or you know whatever he owes him money still so he's just like he's just like a scoundrel <laughs> he's a scoundrel <laughs> And, and and he 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 goes to like multiple you get this sense that he had tried like potentially dozens of times to like just simply run into this guy while he was walking with his you know fellow officers and every you know one time it'd be like you know he couldn't reach him in time or whatever like the other time like the one that adam said he's six inches away he you know his courage failed him and he threw himself out of the way we should actually find that that's yeah pretty, where is that's that? pretty funny let me see here where is that it is adam and our oh also I, I'm, I'm seeing this one little section here um yeah. This is just him, like, thinking about how the guy would remember, in a sense, like, like the fact that he had moved him two years earlier. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so just, like, and how ridiculous. Oh, oh, remember when he uh, wanted to challenge the guy to a duel? Like, like but that was two years later. Like, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So he wanted to show up at his house and, like, or his yeah. apartment, like, challenge him to a duel because of him. Yeah, just, it was madness. You know, it was madness. Um. Oh, I love this too, where he says one morning, though I had never tried to write anything before, it suddenly occurred to me to describe this officer in the form of an expose in a satire in a tale. I wrote the tale with relish. I did expose him. I slandered him. (laughs) At first, I so altered his name that it could be easily recognized. But on second thought, I changed it and sent the story to the annals of the fatherland. But at the time, such exposés were not yet the fashion. My story was not printed. This was a great vexation to me. Sometimes I was positively choked with resentment. So th- and then after that is when he decided to challenge him to a duel at last. And then after and then after that, I think, is when he finally just devised the plan to just run into him, essentially. Yeah, he would have coward. I, I love also in what I read there, like he never you, you get the sense that this guy has never saw himself as failing. It's always like the circumstances were wrong or like like the story is probably just terrible, like because what what could it be like this yeah, guy he, moved me aside at the bar yeah i mean this this guy who like i think is already a very unreliable narrator towards like his benefit even admit he's like um um i did unmask his villainy i even exaggerated it he like admits that like he's <laughs> just like writing down just like fabrications from his perspective it's like, no doubt whatever he wrote down was re- awful and, and he spent, so in the two years that he spent planning on this, he says that he, he had dreams of flights into the sublime and the beautiful, like <laughs> thinking about just like ruling over this person. <laughs> Establishing his equality over him. Yeah. It, I, I, I'm honestly struggling to find, I know it's somewhere between the officer. Oh, okay. I found it. I found it. Um, it's on Adam. It's on page 48, I think of our, uh, Okay, of, okay. of our um okay uh the plan had to be carried out skillfully by degrees but i confess uh that after many efforts i almost began even to despair we could not run into each other and that was all there was to it i made every preparation i was quite determined it seemed as though we would run into each other directly and before i knew what i was doing i had stepped aside for him again and he had passed <laughs> without noticing me <laughs> 
I even prayed as I approached him that God would grant me determination. One time I had made up my mind thoroughly, but it ended up, it, but it ended in my stumbling and falling at his feet. <laughs> at the very last instant, when I was only six inches from him, my courage failed me. He very calmly stepped over me while I flew to one side like a ball. <laughs> That night I was ill again, feverish and delirious, and suddenly it ended most happily. The, the night before I had made up my mind not to carry out my fatal plan and to abandon it all, and with that goal in mind, I went to Nev Nevsky for the last time just to see how I would abandon it all. Uh, the Nevsky is the place where he walks. He says, suddenly, three paces from my enemy. <laughs> He's like an enemy now. <laughs> three paces from my enemy. I unexpectedly made up my mind. I closed my eyes and we ran full tilt, <laughs> shoulder to shoulder into each other. Uh, I like how it's we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. As if it's a mutual engagement. <laughs> yeah. <It's true. laughs> Not just I, some guy I, like shouldering him for no reason. I, I did not budge an inch and passed him on a perfectly equal footing. He did not even look round and pretended not to notice it. But he was only pretending. I am convinced of it. <laughs> I am convinced of that to this day. Of course, years later. Of course, I got the worst of it. He was stronger, but that was not the point. The point was that I had attained my goal and that I had kept kept up my dignity. Like I just, I just love that. Just I had not yielded a step. <laughs> it's it's oh, it's hilarious. Um, and you know what? <clears throat> this was really interesting too because th uh, let's I'm take this is a little bit of a step back for a second. Um, I don't know about you guys, but <clears throat> you know how the first part was very aphoristic. Uh, I noticed the. <sighs> You know, I, I'm kind of psychologizing about him at this point, but I, I, I noticed many themes of the aphorisms occur here in a narrative way, in a, in a way that it really made look, it made part one look like this sort of weird kind of post hoc rationalization where like all of these bad things happen to him. And then in that sense of like, he, he kind of turned and then embraced the thing that was, uh, you know, kind of like subjugating him, you know, like he, he, he's, he's talked about, you know, he even prayed that God would grant me determination, you know? So he like, he kind of like wanted to be determined to do the things that he wanted, but then, you know, obviously like nothing goes his way. So then in part one, he kind of rambles about how like, you know, there is no freedom, but at the same time there is, it was, I don't know. It's just very interesting. Like reading part two after part one, where you get to see the themes kind of become established. Yeah, no, I agree. At first blush, you might even wonder like why this is like the same kind of yeah piece. yeah it's yeah like, actually it's like one third of this is like kind of like random philosophical ramblings of a you know forty year old <laughs> retiree, <laughs> and then you know the next two thirds is just like a series of narratives like from the point of view of a neurotic man like in his early twenties. Yeah, it's like but it is very interesting to kind of like piece back um, to you know part one and see like why someone could have developed to be like the way he was in part one and how he could come to those kind of philosophical conclusions or <laughs> budding <laughs> several <laughs> philosophical conclusions. Cause it, cause, cause it's like part two. I mean, this, it's, this not logical, but just descriptively part two seems to undermine the validity of part one. Yes. That's what I was going to say. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 In, in the sense where like, it's all obviously so derived as this coping mechanism. And also, it just like, once again, like part one was a critique of the idea of the like perfectibility of man. Mm. And you might have been able to take that as like a realist perspective, just reading part one. Mm. But now it just comes across as cynical after yeah. reading part two, where it's just like, I don't understand why Dostoevsky would have like, okay, here are the thoughts that I sort of endorse. I mean, that was a social critique he was making, but mm. it's made by this very loathsome character that has an evident disdain for humanity. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like, yeah, I definitely kind of felt that way too, where it's like, okay, like, are these the ideas of the underground man? But they're not mm. just that. They, these are also social critiques you're making, but you're yeah. lumping yourself in, in a sense, with like, I mean. And yeah, some I'm, of it's true. Like, that's the other weird thing, too, about part one is some of it, I mean, it wasn't all just like stark rambling. 
No, you, my, that's what I'm saying. Like you, you can yeah, take yeah. it as like you know, like a realist perspective, at least in some ways. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm sorry, Giff, I cut you off. Oh yeah, no, no worries. Um, I was gonna say, like I mentioned this kind of last time. Um, though it seemed like now is kind of jumping the gun then. Um, but it it, it is kind of difficult. It's something to keep in mind when reading it is that like. I don't think Dostoevsky is necessarily the underground man. Like he's not, he's, he's, there's a separate, there's a difference between the author um, mm-hmm. and the, the writer. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, well, yeah. abs- well, you know what I mean? Um, between the narrator and our story and then Dostoevsky himself. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, and it's, that's one of the things that's kind of worth fleshing out. I mean, it makes it more difficult by the fact that um, our, you know, <laughs> our raving lunatic, um, kind of articulates points that are conflicting, like paradoxical. So mm-hmm. um, you, you'll you find things like in his ramblings that seem to be like, you know, transparently true, but he'll like, av- he'll like sternly disavow them moments later. But it's kind of like all, it's all like, like there's just no, um, no way for him to collapse those into like one coherent thing. Um, yeah. And, and it's true that obviously, you know, the underground man and Dostoevsky are two different people. But at the same time, I think we talked about this a little bit, in like the, the part one. If you've never experienced anything like this to a even significant degree, I don't think you could write this book. So it's, it is sort of telling of Dostoevsky that he could <laughs> write this. Do you, do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. No, in I some agree. Way. Yeah. Yeah, I just feel like I, I definitely, if I was going to make like a social critique, like in a literary sense, I don't think I would make, I don't think I'd make my points to be like the mouth of like the worst human being imaginable. I mean, like this yeah, guy is such yeah. a bad guy and it's just like, yes, it's literary. And yes, of course, the underground man is not Dostoevsky, but it's mm-hmm. like the ideas that Dostoevsky is trying to get across are coming from a pretty loathsome creature. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's an odd literary device in my opinion the only thing that i could think would be interesting is that you know like because we don't know his backstory we just get this snapshot of like 24 you know we get a little bit like hints of him you know having these like oddities with school too but it's not clear to me to what extent the underground man has always been this way or to what degree society has also shaped him in this way um i mean He's obviously a kind of a sick individual, you know, but you could imagine someone who is a bit, a bit, you know, maladaptive, but placed in a kind of like a horrible society might become the underground man, you know? Um, So I don't know if it could be levied in a, like a critique of that direction. Um, But yeah, I mean, I'm curious because it might be the case that like, I mean, so regardless of like, the neuroticisms um the underground man is somewhat intelligent right i mean he Mm -hmm. he is observant you know to to, to a terrible degree um and to a misleading degree but um i'm wondering if like dostoevsky is kind of putting these things forward as like this is this man is an example of one of the people who will prevent the idea of like um the Mm. collectivist utopianism but he's also one who happens to be aware of that fact you know so that's kind of like it, it is an odd device, but it's like a, a, a self-aware obstacle to utopianism. Yeah, there's no, that, there, yeah you know, that's kind of like, like, yeah, there's no perfecting this guy. I mean, he, he, is <laughs> he, just, he, he even knows like it's, it's yeah. so, the obstacle is so yeah. immense that someone who is aware that he's an obstacle to this is remains an obstacle to this. Yeah, it, it's, it's like almost like, OK, if you believe in this utopia that many of the time we're espousing, you have to believe in your common man and you have have to have like some belief in people and have some, you know, value and respect in people at large. And like, there are people that don't, and this character certainly doesn't, and there are people like him. So. And it ties back to the very beginning before like the proper notes begin is like kind of a quick Dostoevsky comment, which is, you know, the very beginning and the very end in like parentheses, I believe um, in what I read, but it's like someone like this, this is a fictional account but someone like this must exist in our world mm-hmm. so yeah. this is this yeah. kind of where it ties back to like his his like l- l- one of two like actual dostoevsky comments specifically mm. like directed at you is like these people must exist so what this is you know a political and social commentary like you your 
philosophy must grapple with this creature that I'm about to like tell you about, you know? Yeah. 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 It's and also, point. and also like m- many people will have spurts where they are this person. Like, yeah. Not, well, not that they will live. Yeah. As yeah. This person, if but... anything, that's like, <clears throat> actually that probably explains the device is that um, you can, even though he's a pitiful creature, you can always see pieces of um, yourself in them. So it, yeah. it makes it much harder to like, if you have like a kind of a utopian <laughs> viewpoint to kind of like, it really makes you reel it back. It's like, if I can see parts of myself, even if I hate to admit it in yes, this creature, yes. like I may find myself throwing rocks at the crystal palace. Like, Oh no. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's tr- That's actually a good point. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, very, <clears throat> it's very interesting the way he um, kind of constructed this work in it's like, you know, in its structure, but it, I think it actually does achieve it mostly. <laughs> And also, like, you know, I don't know about you guys, but when I was kind of relating to various degrees to the underground man, that was always associated with a memory that was just like a horrible memory. There was nothing that I, there were no good memories that came to mind reading this. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a fact. That's a, yes, <laughs> yes. This is not something you read if you're in the bowels of depression. <laughs> no, no, no. You actually have to be like a very kind of good state of mind, I think, to read this paper. Yeah, you need to be well, good humored with your past failings. I, honestly, yeah, yeah. You have to be, you have to have a, like a healthy relationship with your past, I think, to read this. Um, yeah, it can hit way too close to home. Because so... It, so, it did at points. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> points. oh, yeah. Um, so, okay. Uh so kind of going back into the narrative, he goes to um, he goes to these old school fellows um, without, you know, he, he hadn't like invited himself. He hadn't seen them for like at least a year or something like that. They were never even close. Um, but he, you know, just kind of goes uh, and um, uh, enters their flat. And um, I'll read a quote because I, I like the. I yeah, like and the also, quote. yeah, it, it'll be very helpful to listen to both of you pronounce these names too, as considering you listen to the audiobooks. Because, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, some of these are. They're I'm up to interpretation. Sure, <laughs> they're they're yes, rough. <laughs> yeah, some of these I'm pretty sure I know how to pronounce, but the uh, the tall, cold fellow, how do you say his name? <laughs> oh, I have to see so, it on paper. Um, yeah, I don't know which one is the tall. One starts with a T. Yeah, uh, there was. Uh, for Fitchkin, there was for, Zirkov. For Fitchkin was the one that was Oh, clear. oh, Trubalyov. Trubalyov? Or tr- Trudelyov. Well, yeah. uh, where is this? No, one? no, no, no. Trudalyabov. I'm not... Oh, you sure. there. Yeah, Trudalyabov. Yeah, Trudalyabov. Yeah, Trudalyabov. Yeah, Trudalyabov. Zirkov, Trudalyabov. Simonov. Uh, oh, okay. So he so so he says I found two more of my old school fellows with him. Him being a uh, Simonov, who was this guy who it was so I, I don't have the quote, but I just like laughed out loud. Where he was like, I suspected that Simonov may hate me, but I went nonetheless. <laughs> it was just like, dude, like get better. Friends. Spite is high here. So, so he says um, he hasn't seen them in years. By the way, too, I don't know. If it was like that, it was but... like a year. I think he's yeah that he hadn't seen. Yeah, them. like they're they're. Ah. Yeah, a year or so a, post school, and they weren't terribly warm in school. Yeah, exactly. I, something I, it like might that. have been longer. It might have been three years since you saw for Fetchkin and and. Oh, maybe I yeah, know it was a I, year for Simonov. Okay, 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 okay. But he says he walked in there. They didn't see him in years. I think. Okay, so so he says I found two more of my old school fellows with him. They seemed to be discussing an important matter. All of them scarcely took any notice of my entrance, which was strange, for I had not seen them in years. Evidently, they looked upon me as some as something on the level of a common fly. I had not been treated like that even at school, although everybody hated me there. I knew, of course, that they must despise me now for my lack of success in the service and for having let myself sink so low, going about badly dressed and so on, which seemed to this, which seemed to them a sign of my ineptitude and insignificance. But nevertheless, I was not expecting such contempt. <laughs> Simonov even seemed surprised at my turning up. Even in the old days, he had always seemed surprised at my coming. All of this disconcerted me. I sat down feeling rather miserable and began listening to what they were saying. I love that, like, you get that entrance. And honestly, someone with, like, self-respect or someone who valued their time would have just left. You know what I mean? Just like, okay, they clearly don't want me here. They're not really my friends. Like, to be honest, like, I, I am wondering if this, <clears throat> this social slight is kind of exaggerated as well. Like, if they were discussing something very important, like, it, it maybe not be, like, you know, 
timely to like turn and say hello. Well, no, but you find out what it is. They're just planning like a farewell party. It's not like, you know, they're, well, they're not I, like, yeah, no, but like, I mean, if like, you're in the middle of a conversation, groups. it seems like he has an expectation where like everyone kind of stops and bows to him like immediately upon entry. No, but, but Giffen, imagine like, OK, we haven't seen like, you know, Adithia or someone in years. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the three of us are at a yes like we would instantly stop be like oh dude like what's up it's been years like how are you imagine just like imagine the state of mind we must have in that scenario to to barely acknowledge that he had entered that's fair you, you know what i mean i just kind of put a, a window over of course of course paint over all this where he's like <clears throat> exaggerating the slights even 20 years later especially 20 years later so, so as I said, they're like they're planning this party um, for Zerkov's departure, and Zerkov is this guy who they all kind of admire. He seems to be like a man's man in many senses, um, and he he very very painfully. This is so awkward to read. He like very painfully invites himself to the party when it's abundantly clear that they don't want him to come. I was I was actually Big curious. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. I was actually curious. This was, you know, we said that we've related to the underground man in various degrees, like in, in different ways. I could not relate to him at all in this way. And in fact, I even related to his friends. Like I think I've been his friends more than I've been Doth, like the, the underground man there. Like I, I've never had the impulse to invite myself to something where it was like kind of even i suspect that i wasn't wanted because like that just seems it's not even something like it's not even something that i kind of wanted to but thought it was more noble or like more virtuous to it's like my interest kind of immediately (laughs) not to your advantage (laughs) what's that yeah 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 yeah. but like like i I, it's it's not even something that like i have to resist wanting to do i don't know yeah i mean you just find yourself doing otherwise clearly (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but like the, the spite here, because he actually spe- says specifically that Zerkov, he particularly loathed amongst yes. all of his like <laughs> school comrades. Yes. And it's like, it kind of like reassured him that he must. Like, yeah, yeah. He's like positively this. must go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that like, that was the idea that was like, okay, in order to spite them, you know, I'll, I'll go just to spite them, you know, just because I know they don't want me to. Yes. Yeah. So I, yeah, I've never even had an impulse like that. Like I've, I have the same impulse where it's like I've been in situations before where it was clear like I was like not invited. So oh, sure. Of, so it was more like ah, okay. You then know, it was just but, like yeah. awkward, and then yeah, it was awkward. Yeah. awkward. You, don't, you don't invite yourself though. Yeah, maybe no. you desired to have been, but it's kind of just yes. like a regret. Yeah. It's yeah. not like <laughs> you just double down and just make everyone miserable. <laughs> And, and yeah. I've often been, you know, because I think Simonov, you know, kind of begrudgingly, like, you know, kind of allows himself to be invited. I've been the other friends, like, more often than not in those scenarios where I'm like, why? <laughs> why would we just invite the underground man? <laughs> I, I don't, like, did, I, did either of you guys relate to the friends, like, a lot in that scenario? Oh, yeah. 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 Because, a little because, bit, I'd say. Okay, because maybe maybe this speaks to like a certain bad personality trait of mine, but I'm always just like, what, like what, like no, no, I okay, well, I shouldn't say always, but like I have very clear and like I will fully admit to being like very annoyed that certain people were invited out of pity to things. Yeah, I've I've, I've had instances like that too, where it's just like. Like like the invitation like invitations like made in front of me. I like obviously I wouldn't say anything. Oh, of course. But, yeah. but I'm just I'm just like, oh, are you kidding me? I know, like, yeah. like, <laughs> okay. I, like I I I'm not even sure the person who invited that person likes that person. You yes, know I mean? yes. So Which is why I said like out of pity almost. Yeah. 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 And and to your point, um, Giffen, he so on on page sixty one, he says, "Of course, the best thing would be to not go at all." But that was the most impossible of all. <laughs> Once I feel impelled to do anything, I'm completely drawn into it head first. I would have jeered at myself even afterwards. So you funked it. You funked the real thing. You funked it. On the contrary, I passionately longed to show that all rabble that I was uh, all that rabble that I was not at all such a coward as I pictured myself. What is more, even in the acutest par- paroxysm of this cowardly fever, I dreamed of getting the upper hand, of overcoming them, carrying them away, making them like me, if only for my elevation of thought and unmistakable wit. This is just like... <laughs> he wants to be like the hero of a story here. 
Like he, he's like but everyone he's, loves him, but by the end of like my encounter, they will be forced to love yes, him. They will he, worship. Listen, Zerkov to this. himself will worship at my feet. Yes, listen to this. He says they would abandon Zerkov. She would sit on one <laughs> side, silent and ashamed, while I would crush Zerkov. <laughs> then he wanted to be an exaggerated version of Zerkov. Then, then perhaps I would be reconciled to him and toast our camaraderie. So they become like friends after he would crush him. Yeah. <laughs> Like what? what? It was like the, I, I was just like, dude, what on earth? I, I could not relate to that at all. Yeah, the no, least just, there. And I, I don't know if you guys had like the same idea, kind of like before the meeting. But for me, I almost like expected to loathe these guys because yes. of what I was yes. being primed for by the. Yeah. Movie. You know, what I mean, I yes. was expecting them to just be, like be terrible, and it wasn't like they were like especially pleasant, of course, but it was like. They're actually not nearly as bad as like what he had like concocted in his mind. I mean, they're like, just like hanging out. Yeah, exactly. Trying to be nice friends, going away party. Yeah, yeah. their their position is far more understandable than his. Yeah, like, he's a he's a nut. Ooh. And he, he just descends he further. And dude, dude, like the party scene, I was just like, oh, I was just that was the one of the funniest things where he just like sweating and pacing not saying anything not communicating with them at all because like everything refuses is just, to leave every yes everything is horrible where he like he shows up at five o'clock but the party was scheduled for six Be- you know Simonov told him five and you know you kind of get the sense that like he told him on purpose five or or failed to update him on purpose it, that, yeah like, yeah i think yeah. that was what happened and <clears throat> So he's just like sitting there, just like steaming because like, for an hour. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, because like the table, because it's like it's like a private room or whatever, and like you know the waiter is like still like setting up the room and everything, and he's just steaming there, like just so furious. And they arrive, and it like the whole thing. There, no one's actually happy to see him. Like no one embraces him. Like no one greets him. No, you know, they do. I, they do. I mean, that like that's what makes it even cringier because like. Zverkov, remember, like holds his hand out, shakes his hand, asks how he's been doing, and he takes that as a slight. He's just like he's like. Remember, he was just like, uh, like the handshake was just to get rid of me, to move me aside. And it was oh, like it, yeah. it was just like oh, yeah. it, it was so cringy. It was like, like I know you're right. Yeah, um, there's nothing he could have done <laughs> to yeah, he, not he, have been a social slight. That like he just you know two more years of his own yeah, suffering. He, he greeted him fairly warmly. Actually, it was like. <laughs> It was, like, the... it was surprisingly warmly, actually, considering, like, you know, they were all enemies. the more reason to hate him. <laughs> yeah. The, I, I forgot. Maybe this is what I was confused about because the terrible thing is, too, you get the sense that, like, the door kind of is kicked open. They all very, ch- you know, kind of like as chums, like, come in together. He's been there steaming. <laughs> <for now. laughs> It's just like this, dude. The dinner, the dinner is horrible too. Like I, I don't, I don't have a lot of like details or quotes up from this, but like I, just, I just remember bad. the the arc is so terrible. Where they like, you know, they begin to like ask him his salary, and he he's indignant. He's like, you know, why are you cross examining me? But of course, immediately forfeits like his salary too, and they all go. <laughs> Not very handsome. <laughs> to, to, to his salary. Yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> Not very handsome. <laughs> uh, it's just like it's just this like horrible, tense experience where he's, you know, he like the like like the toast is horrible too. Where he's doing this thing where like you know they kind of toast to Zerkov's success and like you know good health or whatever, and he's just drunk and he's just he's sit he's like sitting down and like he won't toast, and and the the tea guy um, Trudobolyov uh, turns and he's like why he like roars at him he's like why he's like you can't be like you know why won't you toast Zerkov and he's like he he's like drunk he's just like because i want to make my own toast he's like he stands up and he's like i first of all he's like i hate okay can i read it yeah i don't have the quote okay 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 (laughs) (laughs) lieutenant zverkov i began (laughs) let me tell you i hate phrases phrase mongers and corseted (laughs) waste that's the the first point (laughs) and there's a toast and there was a second one to follow it The second point is, I hate dirty stories and people who tell dirty stories, especially people who tell dirty stories. (laughs) 
so and, and, and this is after like you know Zerkov just told some escapade where he was yeah. just like you know there's some rendezvous with some woman the third point I love truth sincerity and honesty so um I love thought Monsieur Zerkov I love true comradeship on an equal footing and not, hmm, I love, but however, why not? <laughs> so it's like incoherent because he's drunk. I would drink to your health too, Munger Zirkov. Seduce the Circassian girls, shoot the enemies of the fatherland, and into your health, Munger Zirkov. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and everyone is just very, very just taken aback by like what he said. Essentially. <laughs> yeah, Zirkov yeah, still yeah. kind of acts like, you know, he it's true. Like, he keeps. The, I am he very keeps much obliged to you. Yes, and then and then yeah, Trudeau Yaver. He's like he like ruins. He's like I ought to suck him. <laughs> Look what he's Whoa, 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 he first screams, "Damn the fellow!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> Zirkov is like graciously, but like uncomfortably, like trying to like turn like this conversation and like yes, <laughs> make it seem as if he's not like a villain. And then they're pounding up. Damn the fellow. <laughs> You want the punch in the face. Yeah, then for Fetchkin, he challenges for Fetchkin to a door. <laughs> <laughs> Even Simonov is like, we ought to turn him out. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and for Fetchkin's just like, I, I, I wouldn't dare to like, like you, you, he, he goes like, you know, uh, you couldn't even insult me. Or like, no, no, Zerkov says that. He's like, you couldn't even, like, even insult me. So he's just like beneath contempt. It's just like this horrible figure. <laughs> Afterwards, you know, this is um, the <laughs> underground man thinking to himself. He's like, now is the time to throw a bottle at their heads. I thought to myself. <laughs> I picked and up all... the bottle and then and Poured filled my, my glass. <laughs> that th- this like that entire like that entire thing made me think about that quote. He's like where, where he said, I am never a, a coward at heart, but I often am a coward at action. That's where he's like coward. he's got these like you know he's like thinking of like throwing a bottle because because clearly he stands up and begins the toast as like he's going to just like expose this guy he's just going to like unmask his villainy his arrogance but then he he like be, he, he's here's like the underground man's problem he's like always in between two courses of action because he's obsessed with thought so he'll like stand up and he neither tells him off nor actually like ingratiates himself he does this like just mealy mouthed middling thing where like clearly he insulted him, but then he tries to like kind of make it back. He's, he's like a real inability to commit to anything. Yeah. 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 No, this definitely ties into <clears throat> the comments in the first part. Like, he, yeah. He, whenever he does like not even commit, but just kind of like has to make the decision. Just <laughs> it's always the poor one. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, and it's like, they, they tried to kind of, they were kind of friendly at the beginning. Like, it's like, uh, I mean, they were saying like, oh, like we, like we made you wait. Like, sorry about that. Like, you know, I, I don't know why Simonov didn't tell me. He's like, yeah, I don't know why he didn't. <laughs> you know, he, just, like, he, he doesn't like. He gives like, them no grace. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, like, okay. Like, how long have you been waiting? Like, truly, <laughs> Trudeau, you buff, inquired. I, I arrived punctually at five o'clock as I was informed <laughs> yesterday. I answered aloud with an irritability that promised an imminent explosion. <laughs> like, didn't you let him know that we had changed the hour? And he said, oh, oh, um, <laughs> oh, then like Ferfetchkin laughs and he's like, it isn't funny at all. I cried to Ferfetchkin <laughs> more and more irritated. It wasn't my fault, but other people's, they neglected to let me know. It was it was it was simply absurd. <laughs> you can imagine him just being, just like losing his mind at the table. <laughs> it's a classic example of where kind of it's one of those classic examples where everyone is a bit of a bad actor, but like a very mild one. Because like yeah, he probably like you know, but but then there's one person who will just have like the dinner descend into hell. You know what I mean? Like you you need because if everyone's kind of you know kind of like a subpar actor. You need that person just like, okay, just let's pull it back. Let's bring it up to like above ground. You know what I mean? But he just dives. He just embraces yeah. like the... It, it's, the worst it's part is that... It's continually Zverkov. That is like yes, it's Zverkov like, yes, that's yes, yes. rising. And he just, he spiked him for it so much. Yeah. And he thinks just like, you know... He, you think you're so good that you'll rise? You'll see that we won't rise. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. But by my actions. Yes. We will um, not rise. That'll so, show you, Zverkov. So we should talk about like the brothel scene, obviously, um, because basically they um, so like what all of the friends go. They're like, you know, let's keep this night going. Let's go set up the brothel. 
uh, you know, as we all have. Uh, and, and, um, and so he, he follows them intending to slap Zerkov and expose his villainy again. <laughs> uh, because he wants, he wants Zerkov to duel him, but he knows that Zerkov like, will never you know, kind of stoop to his level to do it. But he thinks, you know, if I can just like get a slap off on him, then he'll be forced to because it's like such a such a, an affront to his honor, you know. So <clears throat> he um he follows them to uh, the brothel, and this was another instance actually where the deter- like the determination came up again because he he exclaimed. It is ordained. It is fate. Drive on, drive on to that place. As he, you know, like he was like accosting the, the driver there. Yeah, I want to read one of the, the quotes yeah. of the driver. <laughs> get on, driver. Get on, you rascal. Get on. <laughs> He's like hitting him in the back. Like... <laughs> it makes it has like a wonderful visual too, because like, I mean, this isn't like relevant to the plot, but he, uh, I mean, at one point he tells the driver to stop, right? And then he kind yes, of wanders yes. out into the middle of the street, bro. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> kind of like debating whether he actually wants to go yes, through with it. Yes. And then he gets back and he's like, come on. He's like, like, <laughs> yes. and the guy's like, you know. He's yeah. with, he's cracking the whip as hard as he can to like get the yeah. horse to yeah. <laughs> and like the moment where he's like, it is ordained, it is fate, drive on, drive on. And he says, and in my impatience, I punched the sled <laughs> driver on the back of the neck. <laughs> What are you up to? What are you what hitting are you me for? for? The poor man shouted, but he whipped up his nag so that it began to kick out. <laughs> like she just punches him in the back of the neck. You can, t- you can tell this is like kind of the moments that really clearly illustrate that he doesn't actually seek equality with anyone because he, whenever he behaves with someone who's like clearly on a lower social status, he abuses them. Yes, yeah. yes, like yeah. pure abuse. And it, and this like will you know lead into the final uh, scenes as well. Because who is what is more lowly on the social like hierarchy than a prostitute? Yeah, exactly. That's, we're going to a brothel. He hates he hates people above him because they're above him, and he hates people who are below him because they're below him. He just has like complete contempt for everyone. Yeah, it's while bad. while also obviously being like he both hates people, but he's obviously also so he's such a weak person that he's dependent on their ideas about him too. So it's this like, just like really terrible, like warped value system. Yeah. Just, just, yeah. It's just really, really bad. Um, And um, so he basically, he, he arrives at the brothel and he has sex with a young girl there whose name is Liza. And, they talk, so they, you know, you know, so they have sex, and they're talking afterwards in this very like strained fashion. And he weirdly calls, he kind of like refers to her as almost like a slave. Um, and I had a quote that stuck out to me about that. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, so he he was kind of you know. He, he was talking about how, you know, Giffen, you said she's a prostitute. And he was talking about how, you know, this is like a horrible life. Why are you living this life? You know, you could you could do so much better, which is ironic, given that, like, obviously they just had sex. So he's sort of like participating in this lifestyle, too. And he and so uh, on page 82. So the same thought may have been straying through her mind when she was staring at me just before. So she, too, was capable of certain thoughts. Damn it all. This was curious. Is this kinship? I thought almost rubbing my hands. And indeed, how, how can one fail to manage a young soul like that? The sport in it attracted me the most. So he was like, because he literally goes, so she too was capable of certain thoughts. He, he almost views her as like incapable of certain thoughts while obviously at the same time being like extremely intimidated by her and unsure of himself in front of her. How did you interpret that certain thoughts? Cause what it seemed to me is that he thought she was feeling ways that he often does. So it was like a, a sympathy kind of um, thing. Yeah. I mean, it was also seemed like he was falling for her a bit. Um, oh, here clearly. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Clearly. It's like, Oh, you <laughs> actually, we maybe, sh- you know, we share this, we have this thing in common, maybe, you know, 
Um, yeah. Well, this is something I noticed about him too, is like he's obsessed with viewing people as their social or economic status. He's like obsessed with it. He, like he, he always reviews or, or, or refers to people rather by like their title, by their position. Like he, you know, he's, he's like if they have none, he that. whacks them in the back of the head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was like I almost took that as he was like surprised that, that this girl is like more than like just he, he, it almost it was almost as though he kind of viewed her as like this thing that would almost just like turn off when like people weren't you, you know like you, you know using her. It was I don't... The, the, the whole thing was very very strange because it's like. Yeah. He, it, it almost seemed like the conversation was normal enough until she began to say like, okay, you know, you speak like a book. Yeah. And then he just goes into like these long, just like soliloquies yes. as he just kind of rhapsodizes about like, you know, almost like her poor state of life. Yeah. And like what, and like what she's destined to become. Yes. And it's just like, like the woman you, with the fish on the doorstep. Like yeah. Yeah. And, and, did you, and did you take that as true that like he had actually witnessed that? No, no, completely fabricated. It seemed completely fabricated because like earlier in the conversation, he admits the fact that like, you know, okay, with regard to, um, how waterlogged some of like the graves can get. He's like, you know, he was kind of <laughs> no, but he was just kind of like talking about. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Did, that... Did the mic pick that up? Yes. Oh, really? Oh, I'm... Just, just a little bit. Just oh, a little sorry. Bit. No, no, you're good. Um, <laughs> but he was just like, okay, I didn't actually witness, you know, uh, these waterlogged graves. But he's he admits like, yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, he's it's like, like yeah, I've been there but, dozens of times. Yeah, exactly. But you know, he hadn't. But it made for you know a good, good conversation piece. Yeah, it's it seems possible. <clears throat> it wasn't hundred percent clear, but I think he just kind of stole these things from books he read. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. It's very possible because like because and this is I think leads to some of the surprise he views towards like Liza is not only that like she's capable like you know and intelligent. But also that she 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 maybe read a book that he was stealing from. Oh, like, really? I didn't. Okay, I didn't see. Well, that. The, the book comments seem to suggest that, and then um, I think I might have like heard some commentary about it um on another, you know, review of the work that I thought. But like I I think he just like r- like you know forms these like stories um, and then just kind of realizes that he's like he uses them. Oh, oh, as though they were his own experience. Yeah, right. Because oh, he, he calls it as if he it was him, and then he's like bl- blasted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the prostitute called me out. <laughs> I actually hadn't read it like that, but that's super interesting. I'm not 100 percent sure. The language is like a, a little bit ambiguous, and the, uh, yeah. again, the narrator is very unreliable. But it yeah. almost seemed like that because, like the pro, I I thought if it's true, I think it worked really well. That like in the for the story that you know he's that the lowliest station possible. And and she, not only is she like you know sympathetic with him, um, and like not 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 lowly as her station would suggest, but she, she surprises him like in many aspects, including the you know being read. I I think though that like the best reading of this is that she didn't know the book though. That yeah, knew, because yeah. It, it does come across that she's very very naive. Oh yeah, the conversation <laughs> about such things like you know. Like someday you will die. Like why must I die? You know what I mean. Yeah. Stuff like, like kind that's of, true. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean. It's like it doesn't seem like she's really looking. Yeah, it's that far into the future. Yes, yeah, true. It, Maybe it's not the know. exact book, but more so like you tell stories as if you're just pulling them. You know, mm. from from not your own experiences or from other works like a book. Yeah. Yeah, he does say. Oh hush, Liza. How can you talk about my speaking like a book when it come when it makes me. Uh, I'm sorry. How can you talk about my speaking like a book when it makes even me an outsider feel sick? Though I don't look at it as an outsider for indeed all that has touched me, uh, all that has touched me to the heart. Is it possible? Is it possible that you do not feel sick at being here yourself? So yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like that, that's, I think it's congruent with both interpretations. Um, but what, what did you guys make of, because, because he like, it was very weird their conversation where he almost is like he's almost like berating her about her he's like like 
in a way that is not because you could imagine you know you could imagine like a conversation with someone who is doing something that is extremely you know deleterious to their health like you know yeah. being a prostitute and you could imagine a conversation where it's like okay i care about you like i see what you're doing is not good like for yourself or for your health you know like it's it's not going to be a happy life but he's just like you're a slave <laughs> like you'll be this fish woman like on a doorstep like and he's almost he's almost saying it like very contemptuously like he both thinks that she should do otherwise but that he's happy that she isn't because then she would be more equal to him and he likes being above her yeah it's so, so weird the way he talks to her yeah the the way it kind of feels is like he in in general and this is you know the same thing happened in the previous kind of section with like the friend group. He's like, he wants to be the hero of this kind of um, story. And in this case, like, you know, wants to be the hero to like this prostitute, like maybe like he's kind of like entertaining the idea of like bringing her like mm. up. Right. Um, like out of like the, you know, a brothel because, you know, she seems somewhat capable, but instead like <laughs> he, we can realize that all he can do is like put her in such like a, like she seems He's like, why are you like, so why aren't you more miserable? Like, it's only, it's almost as if only through him belittling her, could she stoop so low as to accept his, you know, his um offer of being a hero. He, did you also find it a little bit weird through like um, the hero complex that he was projecting? Hmm. It, it was, he was kind of like giving that complex in several different senses like in one sense it was very paternalistic where it was like almost like if i were your father like here's Mm. how i would have treated you at one point but then it's like if i were your suitor or your lover here's how i would be and it's like here is how i would be if i were your friend and i i got i kind of was able to like pinpoint quotes that kind of would point to all three there where it was like it didn't really matter what role he wanted to play necessarily as long as he was the hero in her life. So that's that I had yeah. not noticed the three different roles, but yeah, of that's course, very it, interesting. Yeah, that is, I mean, it's spot on. That, yeah, that's, I, I love that actually. I had, because he, <laughs> uh, you know, he obviously talks about, you know, he had been like, there, there, there's one quote where he says, <clears throat> um, he's not speaking, this is just writing. He says, I felt for some time that I was turning her soul upside down and breaking her heart. And the more I was convinced of it, the more I wanted to gain my end as quickly and as effectively as possible. The sport, the sport attracted me, yet it was not merely the sport. And it was just like, and then he talks about, you know, he, he knew that he was speaking stiffly, artificially, even bookishly in, sh- in short, but he didn't know how to speak except, quote, just like a book. So it was like, it, it, it's almost as though it's almost as though he's like he believes what he's saying when he's talking about the life that they could have and how this life is like you know horrible for her but he he believes what he's saying is true but that he's like taking it too far like he's 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 i don't know like have you there's there, there's obviously versions of this that i think everyone has experienced where you're in like a conversation where someone's obviously naive or doing something stupid or like um actually i was thinking about this and i'll try to keep it very very non-specific but <clears throat> there was like a certain okay. <laughs> <laughs> just begins to talk about your naive behavior and yeah, like, yeah. So, well here's what Gethin was doing the other day so. yeah. um there was a person that all three of us knew in high school and that person uh <clears throat> was not giving themselves the best opportunity for a good life, quite like the way that Liza was. And uh, we would often have conversations with that person where, well, not quite like, but, you know, obviously they weren't prostituting themselves, but like, you know what I mean? Uh, And narrows it down. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And we would have conversations with this person where I remember just to be completely blunt, I remember all three of us did this at one point in time, or at least I'm, I'm imagining that you two did, because it was obviously true of me too, to some degree, 
where we would be having conversations about like the future and about like not turning this person's life around, but kind of like what would be best for this person. And there were instances where it went past the bounds of, you know, just offering advice or like talking about what could be. And there was almost this like bit of enjoyment, not obviously not to the degree of like, you know, the underground man, but like that impulse, I think could have been present for all. Like, I, I think Adam, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. And I mean, like, I, like I'll admit there, obviously I'm not the underground man in that sense, but like he's pointing out this, like, it's not an arbitrary thing. Like there's not an ar- arbitrary danger he's pointing out. Like when you're talking to someone who is lower than you. Would you, would you agree with that? No, I, I, I definitely would. I mean, I think some people will get this. It's, it's not just a savior complex because it's almost like a, uh, like a transient savior, like savior complex where you kind of like just enjoy the idea of like imagining turning their life around or, mm. or just like just acting as some sort of sage like figure, but more for the enjoyment of like being the sage at yeah. that moment. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and less yeah. so yeah. for like, you know, like the gen- like genuine desire to provide good advice, you know? So. And, and, and like the underground man, it, it, he always, like what you said struck me as so perfect because I had thought about this, but I would have never put it in those terms where he, he like fantasizes about kind of turning this person's life around, but never to the point where she's an equal. Like he, he kind of, you know, he imagines, you know, them being a couple and him like bringing her out of the situation. But then, you know, he paints this picture of she would be just like eternally grateful to him. And, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not, I don't know. There's like this very, just a, a slave just in my hands. Yes. Yes. What, where's that quote? Oh, what, what is that quote about love where he says, um, oh, I've got a, that, that is it's such a good quote. Or he says something like, I even wondered at one point if love was nothing more than the willingness to be a slave to the person you love or something like that. Do you remember that quote? I can't remember it exactly, but I, I know you're in the area. I, I think. It, Hold on. Yeah, it's, 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 a very, um, it's very close to that, if not that. Um, I, I don't know. Okay, it, I, I, oh, I see one at the very end, but it's, I think it's a little past where we were in like chapter 10. But No, chapter 10, is, it was in the first conversation. Okay. No, well, no, all... no, I'm not sure actually. Maybe it was in the second. Maybe it was in the second I, I conversation. I found a paragraph in chapter 10 at least. Okay, well, just read it. You know, it's... it's... Um, so it's... Oh. I'll just read the paragraph. I know I shall be told that this is incredible, but it it is incredible to be as spiteful and stupid as I was. It may be added that it was strange that I should not love her or at any rate appreciate her love. Why is it strange? In the first place, by then I was incapable of love for I repeat with with me, loving meant tyrannizing and showing Mm. my moral superiority. Um, I have never in my life been able to imagine any other sort of love and have nowadays come to the point of sometimes thinking that love really consists in the right freely given by the beloved object to tyrannize over her. That's exactly what I was thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's it's a little bit later, but yeah. He has this like, there's this really ugly aspect of him where he has this, like he has this real inability to have a relationship with someone where there's no dependence either way. Yeah. Any kind of relationship at all. I mean, this would be true. It's like Zirkov or, you know, the officer. Yeah. No, I, I just get the sense that like, because so, so, you're right. He doesn't have any healthy relationships, but you get the sense that like, I mean, he holds down a job. You know what I mean? Like he borrows money from that person. Like he's, these are unhealthy relationships, but he's able to maintain them. But yeah. there's, but there's never once a hint of a relationship that he maintains on anything close to an equal footing. Like he doesn't no, have any no. friends. The, yeah. the one friend he describes has ha- having had, it was just like him oppressing the other Ooh. that like that that was his one like po- what he viewed as a positive relationship that might have yes. like, from his perspective that might be the best and it yes. was tyranny 
Yes. And, and like, even, you know, the relationship he has with the guys sending Zerkov off, uh, that's not a, it's not actually a relationship. They've, they've long forgotten about him. They like never wanted to see him again. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah, it's like very, I don't know. He's just like very ugly side to him, um, which I found disturbing. Um, it, it is quite disturbing. So he just, um, like it, what their, their, their first conversation really terminates in this uncomfortable, like he just kind of leaves. Oh, it was so bad. Can I actually like read this? Yeah, it sure. was so bad. Um, so this is like right at, I think shortly after the like a book comments. Mm. Um, uh, let me just find a good place. For it. <laughs> so I'll just read the whole paragraph. I knew I was speaking stiffly, artificially, even bookishly. In fact, I could not speak except like a book, but that did not trouble me. I knew I felt that I should under um, that I should be understood and that this very bookishness might be an assistance. Um, But now, having attained my effect, I was suddenly panic-stricken. Never before had I witnessed such despair. She was lying on her face, thrusting her face into the pillow and clutching it in both hands. Her heart was being torn. Her youthful body was shuddering all over, as though in convulsions. Suppressed sobs rent her bosom, (laughs) and suddenly burst out in weeping and wailing. Then she pressed closer into the pillow. She did not want anyone here, not a living soul, to know of her anguish in her tears she bit the pillow bit her hand till it bled i saw that afterwards or thrusting her fingers into her disheveled hair seemed rigid with the effort of restraint holding her breath and clenching her teeth i began saying something begging her to calm herself but felt that i did not dare (laughs) and all at once in a sort of cold shiver almost in terror began fumbling in the dark trying hurriedly to get dressed to go so this is like yeah this is what happens he like she's like grieving practically over like yes. his, over the conversation they're having and yes. he has like a, a, this, a stray thought to comfort her and then decides no let's let's just leave yeah. um, and then that kind of the scene basically ends with like you know he gets a candle um she gets up because she's like the, the light is there and then mm. um he's like come to see me tomorrow and she's like i'll come and then it's just like hey, just this weird anxious um, kind of departure it's like this goodbye so strange. Well, and, and he also like doesn't wish the best for her like at heart because i mean mm. re- re- like recall like as like he's departing she like you know quickly says i need to get something right so she runs and grabs a letter that i believe mm. some someone in medicine who she had met at a party had like taken a fancy to her and had yeah. written her like this wonderful letter about how he's you know super interested and is like attempting to court her and this person's like of apparently like decent standing right and he doesn't and know he, of her background he doesn't know if exactly yeah. exactly and, and then like and like what's the underground man's take that's ah, it's gonna amount to nothing and it's almost like and this, he that <laughs> that was her real hero yeah yes, exactly exactly, yes. exactly so he like dismisses like any possibility for her real elevation. Dude, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's about not an that, elevation right? unless worst. it's like, through me. <laughs> so exactly, exactly. He's actually willing to sacrifice her real possibility of escaping this life so that he can sort of torment and be tormented by her. Like it's it's like it's a horrible dude. Yeah, no, exactly. Is... So so it's like, you know, any decent person in that m- might actually stay and give advice about like, okay, here's how you might you might want to pursue that, you know? And I mean after like pretty much saying, okay, your life is a hellhole and you're going to die alone in like in basically like an unmarked grave and people yes. will toast you at the bar one final time and then that will yes. be the end of your existence. Like all of your abusers will like toast you at the bar. And she's like, hey, actually, there's like a potential way out. And he's like, it'll amount to nothing. And it's just like, he's just a bad guy. I had forgotten so, about that. It was like yeah. villainous. Oh, yeah, that, it's yes. really bad. Yes. And and um, so he leaves and because he he thinks that she's going to come see him the next day and she doesn't. And this sort of sends him into like an unhinged fit of <laughs> like just <laughs> thinking overthinking self-loathing like the hero complex disintegrating so you need to build it back up it's it's bad it's pages and pages of like i, I was cackling though at the absurdities with his butler apollon <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the guy who hasn't gotten paid yes. <laughs> yeah. who knows how long and he still abuses him and, and he, he he calls him his tormentor he's just, because like the guy it was like it was like the weirdest thing i've ever read because he he had like he had um 
withheld Apollon's pay to pay for like the dinner and like the like the um you know he, he was already in financial distress because of like the, you know the leather gloves the beaver the faux beaver fur you know so he just like he just like withheld this guy's pay and the way he asked for it was like very very minor in comparison to like withholding his pay you know this this like the butler like he said he like stood in his doorway or whatever just with like clenched fist just like stared at him which would like well, well, he'd, he'd have like pursed lips yes and, and would like maintain <laughs> eye contact so so like every two hours he would emerge from his room right and mm. would like stand outside the room and just stare at the underground man yes and then like the underground man like at one point like turns around and just like maintains eye contact for two minutes and then like then turns back to what he's doing like it's just it's like a, it's another classic example of both parties are not acting well like you know to just but you know for your like you know like the butler should really just say like you know I, you haven't paid me. I understand you may be in like some financial struggles or whatever, but like we kind of established like a, you know, a payment schedule or something. Yeah. Instead, he's like in this spiral. He's like, he was the bane of my life. The curse <laughs> laid upon me by Providence. <laughs> I do love when he like, screams, tormentor, tormentor. Yes. And he, and, and he, he's like crying out tormentor and the butler just turns stolidly to go away. And he rushes after him and grabs him by the shoulders. And he's like, you're like many sins should be forgiven of me for what I've put up with you <laughs> from you. And he's just like, if you have an order for me, sir, I am commanded to take it or whatever. He's just like, that's not, like, he's just like, I, he's like, I hate you. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think we should read part of that just for fun. Okay, do it. I don't okay, have anything. So, <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to just kind of read the whole page here. Um, okay, so they, they, they continue like with this, you know, they've been like staring at each other for like a few minutes and then kind of repeating this process a few <laughs> times. But this time the, the, uh, the usual maneuvers of severe staring had scarcely begun when I lost my temper and flew at him in a fury. I was irritated beyond endurance even without him. Wait, I shouted in a frenzy as he was slowly and silently turning with one hand behind his back to go to his room. Wait, come back, come back, I tell you. And I must have bawled so unnaturally that he turned round and even looked at me with a certain amazement. However, he persisted in saying nothing. That infuriated me. How dare you come and look at me like that without being sent for? Answer. After looking at me calmly for half a minute, <laughs> he began <laughs> turning round again wait i roared running up to him don't don't stir there answer now what did you come in to look at if you have any order to give me at the, at the, the moment it is my duty to carry it out he answered after another silent pause with a slow measured lisp oh yeah he lisped, oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> raising his eyebrows and calmly twisting his head from one side to another all this with um exasperating composure <laughs> here's, here's where it starts getting really bad that's not it that is not what i'm asking you about you torture i shouted shaking <laughs> with anger i'll tell you myself you torture why don't you cut money why you came here you see i don't give you your wages you were so proud you don't want to bow down and ask for it and so you have come to punish me with your stupid stares to torture me and you have no suspicion, you torture. How stupid it is. Stupid, 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 stupid. <laughs> and then he turns around again. He's like, listen, <laughs> here's the money. Do you see it? Here it is. Here's the whole seven rubles. But you are not going to have it. You are not going to have it until you've come res respectfully with a bowed head to beg my pardon. <laughs> Do you hear? He just responds again. That cannot be. He answered with the most unnatural <laughs> self-confidence. It will be so. <laughs> I, I give you my word of honor. It will be. And then, like, it continues on. But I, I won't keep going. But remember, he like asks him to go to like. Uh, he's like, go to the police. Yeah, go fetch the police. <laughs> Go at once without a minute's delay and fetch the police officer. Yeah, because yeah. the butler said, like, I could have you arrested for this behavior. He's like, then go. He's like, he's like do it, have me arrested. <laughs> I love that he had intended to, like, kind of withhold the pay for a fortnight, possibly two. And he lasted four days before he's like, here. <laughs> I know why you're here in the articulated forum. <laughs> yes. This is madness. It's like and, a real telltale heart moment there. Where it's yes, just like, yes. like the butler, like, probably goes into the room and for two hours like 
isn't thinking about the money necessarily, but it, it comes out and like will kind of like let him yeah. know. But it's just like like the underground man is just seething there all day, just like you know what I mean, just, just like waiting for him to emerge from the room. So yes, yes. and yet another instance where like this is a clear social inferior because he's his butler. Yes, <laughs> but the butler yes. is just better than him. Yes, <laughs> above him in every way, dude. I I actually hadn't thought about this until like listening to Adam read this, but you could almost imagine. That the butler himself is a bit of an underground man in certain respects, for like from this, but he, you could imagine, you know, he had, you know, was a good young lad at one point, had sort of a bad fall in life. He's got to be a butler for someone. And then he interacts with this cretin for like seven years. He's been his butler. Like he's probably got some underground tendencies of himself after that long. You know what I mean? So it's yeah, just yeah, like the, like the cycle of just madness kind of perpetuates itself. You're not and, a healthy relationship yet again. No, no. And, um, and then this this uh, conversation or this fight or argument immediately leads into um, uh, Liza yes. entering. Because <clears throat> she opens the door as he's like racking him <laughs> with the shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> and he, well, he's screaming, I will kill him. <laughs> kill him, I shrieked. <laughs> so. Yes. Um, and and he, you know, just like turns and just like runs to his room in like embarrassment and shame. And um and she, you know, she comes into the room and it's very, it's very awkward because they're both like not speaking, but he's also like, dude, it's his emotions in that conversation are just like unhinged, where he's like, he was like, he's like, I positively loathed her for coming and like wanted to punish her for her silence now. But then, but then he'll like obviously have, you know, he's like acting out like, you know, deep feelings for her because uh, it's not explicitly stated, but you get the sense that this was the first girl he was ever intimate with. Um, like you, uh, you definitely get that sense from him. Believable. Um, yeah, believable. And, um, <laughs> Because he he's, he described himself as like a very unattractive man too. Remember, he was like, I caught a look of myself in the mirror at the brothel. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. like the, the third word and like or the third uh, sentence in the book is That's I'm true. an unattractive man. It, it it is hard to kind of get exactly what he looks like though, because you know I I, I don't want to like derail us for a second, but okay. So when he was talking about his interactions with like his coworkers, he describes his face as unintelligent. Right, he says like he wishes he had a more intelligent face. Like he, he. I thought he most... said he had an intelligent but no, unattractive no. face. No, actually, he says that he had later on. But that's why uh, the, here's the contradiction. Oh, because okay. Later during like the conversation during the dinner, um, he says like you know I have a much more intelligent face, and he speaks of like the intelligence in his face. But I'm pretty sure he says he has an unintelligent face and, and like wishes for a more intelligent face. He thinks it's kind of hmm. brutish. Depends um, on where you are in like the endless okay, cycle of self-loathing I found, and egoism. I found this, but I was absolutely and painfully certain that my face could never express those perfections. But what was worst of all, I thought it positively stupid looking and I would have been quite satisfied if I could have looked intelligent. In fact, I would even have put up with looking base if at the same time my face could have been thought terribly intelligent. Exactly. Yeah. So so that that's that's on one hand he's saying that but I'm sure your memory is thinking like okay later on when he's with like you know former schoolmates mm. he speaks of how intelligent his face does look. <laughs> So it's like he, I, I, it's hard to kind of get an impression of what he actually looks like. Cause on one hand, he'll just kind of like slip into, you know, I'm, I'm hideous, I'm, mm. you know, unintelligent yeah, looking, but then like in other, you know, moods, he'll be saying like, you know, I have a very intelligent looking face. Yeah. I mean, so, you you get the impression that he's probably, him, you know? he probably looks like fine, like maybe a little like less than cleanly because of his behavior, but he probably looks fine. And it's just one of the things where he just compulsively like analyzes it. And we also have everyone else's psychotic. perspectives yeah. on him. We also know he's not very tall because he talked yeah. about like yeah. the six True. foot man in the bar. Yeah, the officer. And we also know that he's very kind of withered looking. Um, yes. Yeah, from the conversations with his friends because they, you know, oh, how thin you've like let yourself yeah. get. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
like I don't know did did you guys have any thoughts about like the conversation the second conversation with Liza because ah it was just like the entire thing for me was very weird and I didn't really know what to make of it because he would be like <clears throat> I mean in like the classic kind of paradoxicalist that he is he would just be like hating her one moment and then just like imagining a life with her the next and yeah. it was just I, it was like very it was just it was very like it, it was just like it, it was just, just tortured it, there was just no way for i mean like the the um almost like the scenes between the conversations are just completely different because in the first one it's like she views him as a hero and yeah. like that, that that pleases him greatly but obviously when she comes to see like the squalor that he lives in like something that just like in his mind he thought that she viewed him as a hero and later on in his mind he thinks that that's like fallen apart in her mind so like for him it just like um he completely goes mad because of that so so that's true but at the same time doesn't she also make a comment about like she kind of has this desire to almost like abscond with him hmm she she i'm having a hard time finding it but she almost like motions towards this idea of like both of them just kind of like eloping and starting a life together um yeah he doesn't like that though because that, no. that would that would put them on like even even footing of course yeah. He's, he's, yeah he's no longer the hero so. yeah no of course i also wondered um on page 94 he was on page 94 um he this is the morning after um and he says and i was so taken up by that morning that i actually forgot all about lisa and he says lisa not liza i didn't even notice that i actually <laughs> i wondered if that was purposeful there but totally like totally purposeful yeah in a way in which he's trying to convince us that he didn't care about her but he obviously did i didn't notice that that's interesting i i read that and i was like wait this is there's no way that this is a typo Especially I, considering I was reading it as Lisa the entire time. Of course, time. yeah. So, so whenever I read Lisa, I didn't even notice that. Either. Oh, I was reading it as Liza. Okay, so that's well, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like he's he's like constantly because he 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 was even making those remarks like to the readers. He was like, you know, I assure you, this, like what you're thinking could not be farther from the truth about me. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't see a um, typo in my version. Oh, really? I see. Only I'm because like I'm looking at like the word doc, so I'm just control F. Um, but I don't okay. see I see consistently L I S A or L I Z A. Oh, okay, me. interesting. Even on page, even on it's the beginning of chapter eight. <clears throat> Give me one sec. The very end of the first paragraph of chapter eight. Forgot all about L I Z A. Yeah, so it's consistent oh. there. That's interesting. Odd. I wonder if that's like an error on the translator's part or if that's like some nuance that wasn't captured in the translation I'm looking at from the Russian. Interesting. It's consistent. It, fits. <laughs> it fits with either. But it's like, dude, the, the, the placement of that typo. Because like if it was anywhere else, there's how many times was Liza written? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm like you know, 37, according to mine. Okay. So I'm being a bit of an underground man myself then like finding patterns where they don't exist, but I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure that it's not a typo. Yeah. It's Neither spelled, am I. It's spelled correctly sure. in the same paragraph. So Ooh, maybe, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Um, um, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about like <clears throat> thinking about, because they have this, I don't, dude, the, the, like their relationship is so strange because like he, he basically lashes out at her and <clears throat> like says like, why have you come? Like, why do you torment me? Why don't you go? Why after all, do you stand there in front of me? So he's like, he's just like in hysterics and she, um, she responds to him with like love and empathy almost. And she like recognizes that he's like a deeply unhappy person. And they like have this almost embrace of sorts, which is like very, I, it's, it kind of speaks poorly of both of them, to be honest. Um, that they're both like just kind of engaging in that level of behavior. Um, 
and she yeah it was, it was very weird um because he says i don't know to this day i cannot decide and at the time of course i was still less able to understand what i was feeling than now i cannot get on without domineering and tyrannizing over someone after all but but after all there is no explaining anything by reasoning and consequently it is useless to reason so he's like <clears throat> he's like I, I take it there that he's um he's like he's given the opportunity now when he's writing about this to be like okay how was i you know like how did i act to, against my own advantage there like how was i a bad person and then he's just like well you you can't you can't reason anything so like why analyze it so he's like failing to even take the opportunity to understand what went wrong there hmm. Because he says, I was a despicable man, and what was worse, incapable of loving her. But then he like wanted to be her hero too, which is like very, I just found that extremely like a cancerous set of desires there. Um, yeah, and it's, and you can never take this guy at face value. I mean, it's like, yeah, like anything he says, I mean, like on page 108, he's like, um, it's like afterwards before i got home i was cursing and swearing at you because of that address i hated you already because of the lies i had told you because i only like to play with words to dream in my mind but do you know what i really want is that you would go all to hell that is what i want i want peace yes i'd sell the whole world for a farthing right now mm. so long as i was left in peace yeah so it's like um it, it, and that's that actually summarizes like a lot of his thoughts honestly it's yeah. just like i mean it's like just like what you were saying earlier like you know the oscillation between like you know for her to go but then also possibly envisioning a future with her it's like it's and, and this and this goes up until the very last moment of their of their embrace too where he's so she's leaving because things are like sort of I don't, I don't know. I have to imagine it was like a very awkward thing where like both of them are both at the same time kind of like wanting for the relationship to progress, but both of them also not allowing it to. And it's just like this very awkward encounter between them. And so she's going to leave. And she says, goodbye, she said, going towards the door. I ran up to her, seized her hand, opened it, thrust something in it, and closed it again. Then I turned immediately and hurried myself and hurriedly rushed uh, to the other corner of the room to avoid seeing anyway. I meant to lie a moment ago, to write that I did this accidentally, not knowing what I had done, through foolishness, through losing my head. But I don't want to lie, and so I will say straight out that I opened her hand and put the money in it, from spite. It came into my head to do so, while I was running up and down the room, and she was sitting behind the screen. But I can say this for certain, though I did that cruel thing purposefully, it was not an impulse from my heart, but came from my evil brain. This cruelty was so affected, so purposefully made up, so completely a product of the brain of books that I could not keep it up for a minute. First, I rushed to the corner to avoid seeing her and then in shame and despair, rushed after Liza. I opened the door in the passage and began listening. Liza, Liza, I cried on the stairs, but in a low voice, not boldly. There was no answer. But it seemed to me I heard her footsteps lower down on the stairs. Liza, I cried more loudly. No answer. But at that minute, I heard the stiff outer glass door open heavily with a creak and slam violently. The roar echoed up the stairs. So like even in their last encounters, he's both at the same time. Like, I mean, when he like opens her hand and puts the money in it, he's just like confirming that their interaction was transactional. Yeah, the a last <laughs> final slight that he admits he can't, he can't even lie about. It. He's like, this was spite, this was cruelty, like this yes. was intentional. But then at the same, he time, thought about it in advance, dude. This guy, like, he, he is he is actually possessed. This goes back to part one where he is possessed by inability to just decisively act because he does that out of spite. He's like ashamed of it. He turns away. She leaves. He runs after her, but shouts, but not loudly. Like, yeah. Like, Dude, it's like this guy is like actually just this is like horrible. This is like this is like it, it, hell. It, it was like mega cringe at this point. To be yes, honest, like yes. it was. Yeah, 
<laughs> or giga cringe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he yeah. does. Yeah, I mean, he he clearly has feelings for her, but hates himself for it. And it's just like cycle that just perpetuates yes. and perpetuates to the point where he, like at the very end, he just sees the opportunity to give her one last <sighs> slight, right? Like, yes, dude, it's thank you for horrible. your time. It's horrible. And, and she, she gets the upper hand. Like she, she refuses. Like she crumples up the bill and he finds it later. Like, yes, the of the stairs. yes. Like he, like, this is like, you know, a very intentional ending to the story, but he, he has put himself below the prostitute. Like, yes, yes. At the end of this, like Liza is better than him, just strictly. Yes. And he even says, like, a moment later, I flew like a madman to get dressed, flinging on what I could at random and ran headlong after her. She could not have gone 200 paces away when I ran out into the street. It was still an it was a still night. And the snow was coming down in masses and falling almost perpendicularly, blanketing the pavement and the empty street. There was no one in the street. Not a sound was to be heard. The street lamps gave a disconsolate and useless glimmer. I ran 200 paces to the intersection and stopped short. Where had she gone? And why was I running after her? So he's, he's like, he just, dude, this guy, this is like a, this is like a horrible inability to just like escape his own head. It's like, it's horrible, honestly. He says, why? To fall down before her, to sob with remorse, to kiss her feet, to beg her forgiveness. I longed for that. My whole heart was being rent into pieces and never, never will I recall that minute with indifference. But what for? I thought, would I not begin to hate her perhaps even tomorrow just because I had kissed her feet today? Would I give her happiness? Had I not again recognized that day for the hundredth time what I was worth? Would I not torment her? Dude. So he's like, he's actually ruined this girl's possibility of a life for torture for him and, and her. And you get the sense that, like, I don't know about, like, you guys, but you, you, I just get the sense that, like, um, he will be in agony no matter how it terminates. And he's just, like, oscillating back and forth between different ways that it terminates and constantly just, uh, dude, it's like, a, it's just, oh, my, it's, like, horrible. That's why, like, moments like this, I mean, it would probably be worth, like, a second read-through. But, like, instances, like, at the very end right there, it's just, like, I'm not even sure what this says about human nature, like in a deep sense, because this is like schizophrenic behavior. It, it, it's not that we don't engage in that to some extent. Like I'm obviously we all do. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it was madness at the end here. It was I mad. Mean, it was, I mean, like, yeah, he does like debase himself to like the lowest possible, you know, like, you know, instance of just humanity. And mm. suddenly like, he's like lower on the totem pole than Liza. And he's not even totem- on the totem pole is above him like he's below the ground where the totem pole rests yeah so it's like so suddenly like she's like superior to him he's like oh i must follow you now you know who rejecting the money i must tear after her you know yeah. like suddenly you know it, it, it's like oh, all right despise then- her for it tomorrow <laughs> yeah, it, it's like it, it's ridiculous it's really bad it's, it's ridiculous it was due to his madness and then like uh, in the very end the last paragraph he kind of um he circled back around to the aphoristic part one where he says, Mm -hmm. come try, come give any one of us, for instance, a little more independence, untie our hands, widen the spheres of our activity, relax the controls. And we, yes, I assure you, we would immediately beg to be under control again. I know that you will very likely be angry with me for that. And we, and we'll begin to shout and stamp your feet, speak for yourself. You will say, and for your miseries in your underground holes. But don't dare say all of us. Excuse me, gentlemen. After all, I do not mean to justify myself with that, all of us. And it's just like, hmm. he, yeah, it's crazy. Because he just like, he, he's a guy who longs for independence, gets it, longs to be determined by other things, gets it tries to rebel against that longs to be just like independent again it's just like he's never going to be satisfied with anything and yeah i mean given as you said he says you know he he ends the writing with but enough i don't want to write more from underground but the notes of this paradox paradoxicalist do not end here however he could not resist and continued them but it also seems to me that we may stop here yeah it's, it's, it's like Dostoevsky's like entire goal in part two. And I'm, I'm, I'm just sure this, what, what, like, this is like what his thinking was. He's like, okay, 
how can I create a character who always works to his disadvantage Yes. instead yes. of to his advantage? Like, yeah. you know, here's the thesis by some of like my contemporaries that man works to his advantage as long as he knows what, it, you know, knows what his advantage is. Can I create a literary character that always works to his disadvantage <laughs> and he knows that he does. And it's like, yeah, he does. Yeah. He created that. Yeah, yes. he did. Yeah. It, mean, is, it's, it's, it is madness. But he that this but is it's the psychologically character. like yeah honest enough that like we can yes. still it like it, it imparts that realism because we can sympathize with some of like you know yes the more minor aspects of you know what he's engaging in maybe not the extremity of it but it, it he, yeah he, he succeeded yeah, he, he wants you to like recognize probably like 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 you were saying earlier other given or Jordan that okay here are elements that you can point to and say okay. In that same way as the underground man, I sometimes act to my disadvantage. Yeah. So I don't solely act to my advantage or perceived yeah. advantage because there are some instances that I, you know, perhaps align with the underground man. Um, yeah. And, and that not in of... every case, because if you do in every case, you are just like a monster. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're a monster. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, and then that ties back to the thesis in part one where he says, you know, like the, 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 I, the notion that we can kind of act strictly to one's advantage, mm. it, it must be rejected. And like the, you know, rational egoism or whatever, you know, uh, Chernish, Chernyshevsky's um, ideas and things that were popular at the time, like they must be abandoned if you like are able to even see any part of you in the underground man, right? Yeah. The, the yeah. assumption that like we can just follow advantage nebulously is just destroyed here. Yeah, because this yeah, is a man yeah. like Adam said, strictly to his disadvantage. Almost every moment, mm. is just, yeah, he, yeah, he never acts to his advantage. No, no, no like, never <laughs> once. Yeah, it's nor always, hours. <laughs> always to his disadvantage. And I'm not sure I really realized that until like halfway through our conversation, where I'm just like, yeah, he, he he's like literally the antithesis of Chernyshevsky's like thesis. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. Uh, like he's 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 the opposite of Homo economicus. He's a Homo mini- Homo minimus. <laughs> <laughs> just, just dark homo economicus <laughs> yes, yes just strictly minimizing his advantage yeah yeah i i i would be actually really interested because uh, obviously like you know we're three guys in our early 20s reading this i would be actually really interested to hear people's reactions to this who do not fit that demographic like uh, like a like if you know just like you know one of our friends who's a girl read this I don't, I, I don't, I kind of question if they think it would be, cause like, I don't know about you guys. This was like one of the best novellas I've ever read. Yeah. Same here. This is like one of the best things I've ever read. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah, it. I agree. I, agree. <laughs> I, I just want, I honestly wonder if that would be a very gender biased response. I feel like it would change a lot of like the, at least impressions <clears throat> when you're reading through, especially like the, the lattermost part of the example. Yeah. Um, like the, you know, the process with Liza. Um, that would probably like, yeah, that's tough. change it slightly. But I feel like every other idea in there, in every other scenario, would be pretty fair game. True, true. Maybe it's just because it's like a particularly male. Um, the like apotheosis of the story is particularly male. You know, with the that, that's with true. The yeah, but I yeah. I feel like a lot of the elements, like you know, fr- you know friend groups and like being in a bureaucracy, all <clears> those can kind of ring true, even if it's slightly true. tinted. Whenever you get to the you know. The prostitution element that's kind of hard to yeah. be able to relate to in the same way yeah fair enough. that's a, just a gendered profession fair enough yeah well i don't know if we have any more thoughts but i'll just say to the listeners the the addition that i got i i cannot recommend people get this enough because it's like a it's a very enjoyable read and it's also one of those reads where you know I don't know about you guys, but I always kind of intend to read in chunks, you know, like I just, and I, it, this was one of the books where I just it, like went over what I intended to do because it was just so good. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So with that recommendation, I, it, I also hope that people can't relate to the story too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you come out and he's like the underground, the underground man is like my hero, <laughs> another creature. I'll hail the underground man. <laughs> yeah. uh, 
Um, Finally, my story has been told. <laughs> yeah, yeah, truly. Um, all right. Well, I don't know what we're going to do for, for uh, the next reading, but it'll be more existentialism. So I hope people are enjoying the series and tune in next time. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Plato's Cave. Um, I always enjoy discussing topics with, uh, with these two guys. So if you want to um, support the show in any way, you can do so simply by sharing it. Uh, I'm hoping to get this show out to more people. Uh, and so if you want to share it on Twitter or social media, that would really help me. Uh, you can also rate it on Apple Podcasts. Uh, like this video if you're watching on YouTube or subscribe uh, via Apple Podcasts or an RSS feed. Uh, you can also discuss it on your own show and link back uh, to my website. Or you can connect me uh, with recommended guests or topics to cover. Uh, you can get in contact with me at Plato's Cave Podcast at gmail.com. Follow me on Twitter at Jordan underscore C underscore Myers. And I now have a website for my philosophy endeavors at jordanmyers.org. If you want to know a little bit more about me and my fellow co-hosts, um, as I said in the introduction, I'm a master's student in philosophy at the University of Houston. I did my undergrad at the University of Pittsburgh, where I studied mechanical engineering and philosophy. And now that I'm back at school, I'm hoping to more closely study uh, moral responsibility, free will, ethics, epistemology, and moral psychology. Those are topics that I was uh, introduced to and got really interested in in my undergrad work. So uh, Adam and Giffen accompanied me on this show, and Adam is uh, one of my oldest friends. We actually met in kindergarten, um, and we've been interested in philosophical topics for as long as we can remember, and in a lot of ways, it's been the basis of our friendship. Uh, Adam studied chemistry and biology at Cornell, and he is currently working at a law firm. Um, and he's especially interested in moral responsibility as well, but also law, religion, and free will. Uh, Giffen is also one of my oldest friends, and uh, we've been friends since elementary school as well. Um, Giffen studied biology and economics at RPI, and now he works in human health research. Uh, he believes that there's very interesting overlap between both of his fields of study and philosophy, and he's particularly interested in exploring political philosophy. So this series was right up his alley. Um, and with, uh, with all of that information, Again, I hope that you enjoyed uh, this episode, and I hope that you get in contact with me or, or follow my work in any way that you uh, deem reasonable to do. So with that, thank you for listening.